what is the easiest way to become a recipient of God's grace? That is, to help others receive God's grace. When we do that, the Lord automatically bestows a portion of His blessings upon us as well. Let us take inspiration from Professor Subodh Kumar, who enabled a poor child bride to become a best-selling author whose book has been translated in 21 national languages and 13 foreign languages. This lady's name is Baby Haldar. Baby was born in a poor Bengali family that worked in Kashmir. Her father was a drunkard and wife beater. When baby was four years old, her mother ran away. Subsequently, she was left to the mercy of her cruel father and harsh stepmother. When she was just 12 years old, she recollects one day a crowd of guests had arrived. She was pulled away, made to dress up in a sari, and put to sit by the side of a man twice her age and a ceremony took place. She only discovered it was not puja but wedding later on when she was made to pack her bag and depart with this man who was 24 years old. He was physically abusive. By the age of 14, she had her first child and subsequently two more. Finally, when she was 25, she could bear it no longer and escaped with her three children on a train bound to Delhi. There in nearby Gurugram, she became a domestic help. Life was difficult, but she persisted and worked hard and survived, living in the slums, working for people. Her last employer was Professor Subodh Kumar, a teacher of anthropology, significantly the grandson of one of the greatest figures in Hindi literature, Munshi Premchand. Professor Kumar noticed that while baby was cleaning the home, when she came to the bookshelf, she would spend time touching the books, looking at them with reverence, particularly the Bengali literature. He encouraged her and handed over Taslima Nasreen, the famous Bangladeshi author's book and asked her to read it. She began reading. He encouraged her to continue. One day, the family was to go for a trip to South India. Professor Kumar gave her a notebook and a pencil and asked her to write her life story. She said, what? I have never done it. But he encouraged her. It was a painful experience for her, recollecting the miseries of her childhood, but she persisted. When he returned, she had already completed a hundred pages. He began editing, guiding her. Once the book was complete, he translated it into Hindi. With great difficulty, he found a small publisher that was willing to print it. But to everybody's astonishment, the book became an overnight success. Domestic helps, poor ladies all over the country were able to identify with her struggles and her stories. In literary circles, they started saying, this is very much like the diary of Anne Frank. Soon it got translated in English and the New York Times published that this is India's version of Angela's Ashes. 
subsequently that book has been translated in so many languages baby haldar has got the spotlight on her she doesn't understand why people are interested all i did was write about my life but she says one change has happened earlier my children would be ashamed to introduce their mother as a household help but now when asked they say she is a writer she continued to work for some time in the home of professor subodh kumar and subsequently she moved to bengal where she lives today now look what professor subodh kumar did by his encouragement support and assistance he helped one soul make her life a success that is the easiest way to receive god's grace for ourselves and make our life a success the divine law of the universe is god says look when a marketing agent sells goods he automatically receives commission similarly wish good for others do good to others and in the process you will have good done to you we all like to listen to divine knowledge and receive inspiration via youtube videos which is great but there is something even greater to distribute this knowledge to others to inspire enlighten and illumine others when we start distributing knowledge we experience our fund of knowledge automatically starts growing that is why one of the best ways to help yourself is to start helping others and this is also a debt that you repay to your teacher when king janak asked his guru at the end of his training gurudev you have bestowed such wonderful knowledge upon me how can i repay my debt to you gurudev said my child there is no way the knowledge you have received is divine all that you possess is material how can material items ever be the price for divine knowledge ekamevaaksharam yastu guru shishyam prabodhayet prithivyam nasti tadravyam yad dattva chanano bhavet this verse states that if we received one syllable of divine knowledge from our guru all the wealth in our command is not sufficient to pay back for it so gurudev said my child there is one way when you find someone who is thirsty for learning pass on this knowledge to him or her that will discharge you of your debt along those lines chaitanya mahaprabhu said the soul should have two goals name ruchi jeeve daya the first relish the divine name for yourself engage your mind in divine love soak it in the nectar of bhakti so this is the atma kalyan and the second is jeeve daya help others relish the divine name for themselves and make their lives as well a success so do drink from the fountain of divine knowledge through books videos blog posts etc wherever you can but also distribute it yourself for the benefit of others
upliftment of mankind. Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj, who was an embodiment of spiritual knowledge and divine bliss, extracted and reconciled the wisdom from the enormous ocean of Vedic scriptures to spread Maharaji's mission to planetary scales. Swami Mukhadananji has undertaken a monumental task of building Jagat Guru Kripalu University. Understanding the needs of present-day humanity, Swamiji's vision combines cutting-edge scientific disciplines with ancient Vedic wisdom, making JKU a one-of-a-kind plant. The university will encompass the areas of Vedic philosophy, yoga, contemporary sciences, technologies, holistic medicine and arts. Construction of this millennial complex is at full swing on a 100-acre land in Odisha, India. It will play a crucial role in uplifting physical, mental and spiritual well-being of millions of people worldwide. Donate or raise funds for this noble cause. Every contribution will have a huge impact.